Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are to everyone. Um, this is the new member uh, Q&A via Zoom on June 4th. I'm Betsy Coe and um, co-hosting with me today is Hillary Gadsby. Hello. So we do these, we do these sessions um, at the beginning of every month, the first Thursday of the month, and then the Sunday immediately following that Thursday. So wherever those fall. Um, and the purpose is just to um, provide a, a comfortable, safe space to, to ask questions about Wikitree. Um, it's called for new members, but really um, that's a very broad definition of new. Um, it's just for anyone wanting to get more comfortable with how to navigate Wikitree. And what we most love to do is when people volunteer to, um, as, as Dee to my left has volunteered today, um, to uh, let us look at their profiles and ask their specific questions and, and give us a model that, you know, some, some I, questions hopefully everybody can learn from um, by looking at one person. Um, I've been on Wikitree for four years. And I'm active in the England, Wales, Scotland, and Canada projects. Um, projects are a great way to, to find a, a little smaller community on Wikitree, very friendly people um, who can help you along. And um, I'm also in the mentors project and the events committee. Uh, Hillary, you want to introduce yourself? I've been on Wikitree since um, 2011, so um, 12 years, uh, or, or almost 12 years, I think. Um, I am one of the greeters. I have um, was greeting for quite a long time. Um, I took a break and I've then been greeting again for, quite, for years now rather than months. I'm also one of the mentors. And I am a project coordinator for both the England and Wales um, uh, projects. So um, and, and I'm sort of involved with some of the, the teams in um, the England projects as well. So I'm quite been I'm quite busy on Wikitree. So. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Well, um... I thought, so Dee has given um, quite, quite a number of profiles. Um, what we like to, we like to start um, with looking at a, a model profile. And um, so Dee, I thought we would look at John Mifflin Brown as, as the model profile. So I'm gonna share my screen. And I think that's the one I want. Actually, no, that is not the one I want. Hold <laughs> on. I'm going to move you all down so I can see. Okay, here we go. So can you all now see John Mifflin Brown? Yeah, yes. you've got the right yes. one up. Yes, great. Um, so we'll just sort of take a, a tour of this profile. Um, now you may see some things that look a little different on my screen uh, because I have the Wikitree browser extension, which by the way is, is a fantastic add-on to your Wikitree extension. It's just something that you enable on whatever browser you use, um, Chrome, um, Firefox. Um, I believe a version is coming out for Safari very soon. Um, it's free and it does all kinds of things. So um, one thing that it does is it tells me that I am 29 degrees away from John Mifflin Brown. Um, and if I were, oh, I guess that's not, it's not clickable, but um, there are ways if I wanted to see the exact pathway, I could, I could look at that. Um, he's a notable connection. And we have just started doing this on Wikitree. Um, all of you um, should have on your profiles um, your number of connections, and that's your CC7. 
Um, and that is the number of connections you have to other people on Wikitree within seven degrees of yourself. So one degree would be your parents and two degrees would be your grandparents and so on and so on. So your CC7. We have just started doing this for notables. Um, so you can see that John Mifflin Brown has, has 230 connections. Um, and one of the big things we love to do on Wikitree is and try and grow that number. And, um, and so that's what this is all about, help, help to uh, fill in some missing links and um, increase his number. Um, so we have his birth date, death date, and location. Um, this project is both managed by an individual as well as the U.S. Black History Project um, because he's a, a notable. Um, however, you will see up at the top that there's this symbol, which most often you'll, you'll see a um, green unlocked lock, which means that it's an open profile um, that anyone can go in and, and edit. Um, if they have, you know, information to contribute. Um, other options that you would see are, you know, a red closed lock, um, which is private, um, and, and variations in between of, of how much you want to want to share. Um, if um, within a certain period of time with death dates and birth dates, uh, profiles are required to be uh, open. So um, here, um, categories, you, you may see, um, again, one of the options with Wikitree browser is that um, you can put these categories up at the top. Um, if you don't have the browser extension, you might see the categories at the bottom. Um, these are, are really, really handy. Um, so it shows um, cemeteries is very, very popular for categories. Um, also location, showing that also and linking that he was a free person of color, Delaware. These would be places where he lived. Um, the occupations, Methodist minister. Um, and so in case you haven't played with these, I'm just gonna show you, if I go to Woodlawn Cemetery, it will take me to a page. And these are all the people on Wikitree with a profile on Wikitree who are buried in that cemetery. So it can be useful, perhaps, if you have one family member buried in a cemetery, you might discover by looking at this list that you have more than one family member buried in the cemetery. Um, and <clears throat> up here at the top, this is very cool, you can click My Connections for any category that you're on. And it's going to tell me that these are the people, the in the top box, these are people who are directly related to me. There's some sort of blood, re, blood relationship path, um, distant. Uh, and then connections would be the people who are connected to me, but there might be a link or two or three through marriage. So um, that's, that's a very interesting uh, feature with categories. Um, we see that John, John is part of the U.S. Black History Project, as mentioned. And then this bio, his biography is, is excellent. Um, I really like the fact that there's a um, sort of a synopsis, uh, highlights of who he is, and then it goes into much more detail. Um, and we have uh, these sections. I'm going to go into edit mode at the end and and show you um, what this looks like on the on the on the other side. Um, but uh, details from the census. Um, it's really nice to see the the listings um, of his family in the biography. It helps you sort of trace things uh, down to death and will. Um, research notes. Research notes are a really special part of Wikitree. And they um, they allow us to, well, leave leave notes for other researchers or ourselves um, when we're sort of in the middle of, uh, you know, maybe we haven't quite proven things, but we're in the process of it. Um, D, D you, you, were you the one who wrote these research notes? 
I did. I did with the assistance of um, the, I put some acknowledgements um, towards the bottom, the researcher that I was working with. Yes. Yes. Um, Eldridge Ryan. So, yeah. So um, I put <laughs> those notes in uh, based on what I had gotten from him, his research, because I had no idea that this was a relative of mine mm -hmm. um, until 2021, right after my mom died, I think. Um, I had no I, I had no indication of my Spencer side of the family at all through my life. I was told they, they didn't exist. And if you see now from the Spencer Brown side, my paternal side, I have notable and I also have a first in the city of Milwaukee, a police uh, police detective, African American. Mm -hmm. Had no idea. So I, I'm just researching now and able to at least put the uh, research notes in that I'm able to maybe contribute and not everyone has got a citation on it, but uh -huh. maybe by putting them there, someone can help, you know, with that. Absolutely. And these, these research notes were, are fantastic. Um, one thing I, as I was reading them, that I, they were so intriguing that I was wondering who wrote this, you know, and if, if I were working on this profile, I, I would also say, I want to find this person so that we can collaborate. Um, so there is a way to sort of put your signature on um, on notes that you put. Um, Hillary, would you mind putting four, four tildes in the chat so that people can see what that looks like? Um, so what, he, what Hillary's gonna put in there, this is what you would put when you're in edit mode, mm -hmm. you would mm -hmm. put these four little tildes there in the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard. And it effectively um, creates a signature. You know, it would be like, well, if, if I if it was me doing it, it would show uh, Co thirty one Betsy Co, and then it would give a date and a time that I had, you know, added this material. And it's it's at the end of your text at the end at of the your end notes. of the text. Okay. Yep, okay. exactly, exactly. Okay. Thanks, Hillary. Thank it might be in a different place on some people's keyboard. True. 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 Yeah. Yeah, because I've got it on my I've got it on my hash key. So uh, okay. uh, it probably depends on your layout of your keyboard. Right. So good point. Yeah. Um, so here we can see that there's a mix. People are often uh, curious about what is the difference between uh, regular citations and inline citations. And so here we see a mix of both. Um, these first three are linked to specific parts in the bio. So let's find, you look for, it looks like a little footnote. Um, there's two, where's one? Oh, there's one. Okay, um, so, so this, what is said in this uh, bolded text is linked to um, the source number one. Very, um, another great feature about the browser extension is that if I just hover over that one, instead of having to scroll all the way down, which, you know, if you have a long bio, that can be uh, a little cumbersome, um, it'll show you the, um, the source. And here is the second source. <clears throat> I don't, th I don't think you can actually click on it, but you can see what it is. Um, so those are added one way. And if people have questions, I can, I can show how you would add an inline citation. And then these other ones with the bullet points are just, they are contributing to uh, what is stated in the bio, but it's not quite, you know, it's a little bit more work to make the connection between um, what, what these are backing up. So inline citation is preferred. Um, if you could, let me go into edit mode so that you can see. <clears throat> so here, and what I will do is I'll bold it or highlight it in blue. Okay, this was that first inline so it's citation. So it's just this link. And what makes it an inline citation is these two little um, things on either end, the ref and then the slash ref. And um, this button up here, this little C button is what you would use 
Um, if you have something to cite, you would click on it and it would generate the little ref tags automatically. And then you just paste your, your source citation in the middle of it. Um, and then let's go down to the bulk of the sources. Um, okay, so you can see these other sources that have the bullet points just have an asterisk. And that's all that's necessary to do to create create the um, the bullet point. And let's see, was there anything else? Um, you remember in the bio, we had the the nice bold headers that you know were like uh, will and death. Well, th the way to create that is two equal signs whatever your title is, and then, I'm sorry, three equal signs. Three equal signs will create that nice, big, bold heading. Hillary, do you, do you yeah. want to yeah. add it? Uh, um, I think it depends on how you want it indented as to whether you add three um, or you just add two, because I usually uh, just use two. I used to use three, but uh, with a lot of them headings, if you put three equal signs it comes up with a with a, an error on it so uh, okay it i think depends <laughs> on whether it's a main heading um like biography or something like that or whether it's a subheading mm -hmm. and below the biography that you might you might want to put an extra um equal sign in so like the research notes got to yeah, right but if you want to add something under the research notes a different <laughs> one which is not maybe a non-standard one you can use the Right. The three. Right. Right. Yeah. I, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone, I'm getting over a cold. Um, I, I usually use two. So that's why it caught me a little bit off guard to, to notice the three. But um, one way you can um, play around with things and then see what it does is just to click on this preview button and then you'll see your box below and you'll see what the um the wiki markup code is going to look like so um i'm gonna return to the profile without saving all right and by the way this is d's second great grandfather amazing amazing yeah and the um the other profile manager tim nealon is a yeah. cousin a direct a distant cousin through the brown family ah so okay. And and yeah, so and and I've met them. I've met them all now. So uh -huh. they live in Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. So great. If you but, look, um, I I was well. You mentioned the the formatting on um uh, on the citations inline citations mm -hmm. as opposed to the 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 other way they have the bullet points towards the bottom. Yeah. I personally, just from the short time I've been here, I personally prefer to put them all in line. And then if there's C also, or, you know, or acknowledgements, maybe put something towards the bottom there. That's just right. me personally. Yeah. Um, but with this one, Tim had worked so hard with the U.S. Uh, Black Heritage Program, you know, that I didn't have the heart to go. And just because it was the way I preferred to go, because I think U.S. Black Heritage has a specific yes. way that they do it as well. So, yeah. and I think that first paragraph is from WikiTree. It's like the first paragraph they, they allow you to quote mm -hmm. from the notable and then and then use that as the first citation. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But um but I didn't have the heart to change any of the stuff they did because it was just so beautifully done. I just yeah. did the research notes. Yeah. Well it's a it's a really it's a great profile. Yeah. And one more thing before before we turn to these more recent profiles. Um is that you'll notice here that it'll tell you in the box, you know, where it tells you the profile manager. And by the way, if say you stumble across an ancestors profile and it's, you know, it's already there managed by somebody else and you want to, um, you want to start collaborating with that person, you can send, a, send them a message and the message will pop up uh, showing that you were on the profile that you were on so that the person knows um, what you're specifically interested in. And then of course your, your specific message will give more detail. Um, it also gives the most recent uh, changes that were done to the profile. Um, if you wanna see 
longer term list of what's done on a profile, you go to changes. And that's going to show you everything that's been done on the profile all the way back to whenever it was created. That can also be a really, really uh, handy place to look when you're trying to figure out where to go with a profile. So. I was just going to mention, um, if you go to um, where it says contents and look at, at the biography thing, it, it will show you, um, uh, I don't, it's not showing up the, the, on there, um, but if you, sh if you click on the show mm -hmm. on for the contents, it yeah. will show you biography and then it will show you the other ones, which are like subheadings. So the biography is the one where you're using the, the two equal signs and mm. the ones all the one headings below it are the ones where they were using three equal signs so that's mm. how it will how you can tell whether you've got like two with how many you've added if you if you accidentally put two the wrong numbers on it, it'll show up on Sorry. your contents list um just might be useful if people are not familiar with using that and they want to start using it Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's why when we were looking at the death and the will, it had three equal signs because it was in sort of indented within the biography, but research notes was its own section. Yeah, makes sense. All right. Um, so D, where should we go from here? As I told you, I have all of your, um, the profiles that you gave me ready to go. Let's go to uh, Lonnie Spencer, my grandfather, my maternal okay. grandfather. Right. Yeah, let's do. I've been working on on his profile to do him right. Um, he's the one I'm going with uh, for posthumous recognition with the city of Milwaukee because he has no marker on his grave, and he's the first uh, black detective in the history of the city there. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to work something with them. So I'm trying to really do him proud. And I never met. I never got to meet him, and we lived so close in the city to each other and I never got to meet him and he's your he's your grandfather yeah you read his bio you see you know my dad's bio I think is probably more indicative of really what was going on during that time in our family <laughs> yes um, my dad Milton but yeah it's uh, it's interesting but I really want to do him proud and so yeah. I'm not sure if I've got it formatted right and stuff okay <laughs> excuse me so, yep, you got um, a family lived in Illinois and let's, yeah. okay, he was six. So yeah, that would have been his first census. Let me know right. if you can ever do anything for you down in Chicago. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that when you told me that earlier, I, I do, I, I have a, I have a brick wall here with Addie. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, it, it's a personal preference, um, whether some people really like to put, you know, the census details right within the biography, other people mm -hmm. have different feelings about it. Um, I don't, but I also, at the same time, I appreciate um, being able to see it there because um, it, it really shows the um, family relationships, um, you know, ages amongst the children and, um, Ferguson. I think it did a lot for me, uh, Betsy. It did a lot for me when uh, getting to know the family yes. to see those words there with the table. Yeah. yeah it was and nice. would uh, Ferguson, would that have been Addie's mother? Yes. Yes. And she and she's on a census as Irish and, and <coughs> African American. So I'm at a brick wall there too. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, the, what uh, what Dee's done here, um, this is really um, a good idea. She has hyperlinked um, uh, her, her, I guess he would be your granduncle, um, Lonnie's, mm -hmm. um, Lonnie's brother. Oh, what a great picture. I love that. I got that from the Milwaukee Historical Police Society. That's, wow. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so if I were to click on this, I would go right to um, the profile of James Orville Spencer. Um, and um, the, the formula for that, um, Hillary, would you mind maybe putting in the chat the formula for hyperlinking? 
Um, so it's just two square brackets, the profile ID, the yeah. little vertical line, and then whatever text you want, Betsy Co or Elizabeth Co. I mean, whatever you put there is going to show up and then close it off with the square brackets. Um, it took me a minute to remember that I used to mix them up and then they yeah, weren't coming I, out. Me right. too. I am. Um, I've been there. Oh, you're a musician. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recently uh, got to visit my my uncle, my dad's brother, who would be Lonnie's son uh -huh. in Virginia, who's still alive. He, my uncle Leon's still alive. I met all my cousins and him. Uh -huh. I spent the last uh, June. June uh, Juneteenth with them in Vir in Hampton, Virginia. Wonderful. And so yeah, so I got some oral history there too yes. from Uncle Leon, which yeah. is great. Yeah. 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 Now there is a way. Um, you know, I know you asked me in in your email about <laughs> about how to document things. You know, um, what do I do if I have a birth certificate that isn't available online, but I have it, right. or what right. in, in your case, oral history. Now, if you, um, we have a late arrival. Um, if you have oral history from somebody who has known the person, um, you can cite that, um, you know, mentioning that, you know, oh, so-and-so, um, I'm citing this fact about, about your grandfather, um, given to you by his son and you know it, 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 i that works if the people knew each other for instance sure, sure. i could be a source of information about my father because i you know i knew him for you know decades and decades um right mm -hmm. And uh, where it gets problematic is when we have um, oral history about people who are centuries apart then, then that doesn't doesn't really fly but um yeah, this this looks great. Now, um, I see you don't have any research notes. Do you? Not, not yet. Yes. Yeah. Um, I do have some things <laughs> that that I've gotten orally that I haven't quite written up because I don't because I also uh, I'm leery to make them sound too too personal personal when I write them. You yeah. Know? So yeah. even though they're given to me in that way. Uh -huh. So I do have some things that I'm working through right now, but okay. I will stick them in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, um, if you don't have any research notes, that's fine. And, and yeah. you don't, you don't have to have just the blank header in, but if you anticipate adding some. Yeah. Um, I think with uh, him, I will. Yeah. Now, but one thing. Think, be, yeah, go ahead. I, yeah. No, I was going to say, I think I was having issues with um, some of the ancestry sharing links and I, I think what it was okay so there is a code that is a break code that comes in, you know like a uh carrot br you know yeah. forward slash and then it's yeah. a break right I can't, mm -hmm. and I, I don't like them I just they drive me crazy in when I put them in there so I will take out the break but sometimes if I backspace any of the other text it will screw up my ancestor sharing links the um, ancestry sharing links so i don't know if that's something i yeah. do or if it's is is it because i got rid of the break in there well i i know what you mean on on some of this now do you use sorcerer mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um on some of the citations that sorcerer creates um i i don't like what the break does and i just take them out now mm -hmm. i i haven't had that problem with ancestry links so i i don't know yeah okay I'll just, ha I'll have to find some examples and then put them in G to G yeah, maybe. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, the only thing that I can think of, and, and maybe Hillary has some thoughts too, um, is with your images and you have these wonderful images, let's see. So this is your grandparents, right? So what that, that is actually my mom and dad's marriage certificate that cites the grandparents, oh, those grandparents yeah. as grand, you know, it's a source. Yes. Yeah. So it, I it had no shows. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, there I don't is, know if that was good to put that there. Yeah. Um, you can also put your images within the body of the biography. Did you know that? Oh, oh no. Yeah. So let me just uh, show you. Oh, 
<laughs> what a cutie. Um, and my, and my dad, that's the only photo I have of my dad as a, as a kid ever. <laughs> he, he's not in hard, he's in hardly any photos really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking, he's very serious in this. <laughs> he's like, get me out of here, right? <laughs> yeah. And it says, ain't we got fun on the bottom, right? He's going, no. <laughs> 1927. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Um, those, that's also, a, I love that style of hat that your grandmother's wearing. I guess, a, is it a cloche? It's oh, so, she was something else. She was so pretty. Um, yeah, I had a hat like that too. And I actually had it on one day and uh, my dad had looked at me like a ghost walked in the room I, and he never talked to me about his parents. Now I know why. Uh, <laughs> I, I must have looked like her to him. I don't know. <laughs> um, so if we, we come down here, um, so you can see that, um, that um, D has tagged this photo to each of the three people. Uh, with that that are in the picture that way it's linked to their profiles too um, now to set set as a background no here's what we want use inside text oh. so if you want to put it within the bio you would just oh, copy cool. that and then you'll be in the bio but da, 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 and then you just snap that put paste that in right oh. where you want it to appear and oh, uh, that's great that's yeah. great very easy very good yeah thanks that's a great tip yeah sure so let me ask you this very quickly on in, in regards to images what yeah. if i want to remove an image that i changed my mind on how do you do that how, uh, how can you remove them yeah let's let's go back and just look i think there what it what it is is that um you can remove an image um it will remain on the WikiTree server for 30 days in case you change your mind about changing your mind <laughs> um, but what you yeah hillary go ahead yeah what i was going to say is you can remove from an individual uh from one individual profile if it's on several without loot without um you don't have to you could you just need to unlink them but you but if you unlink them from everybody all the profiles it's attached to then it, as you say it will only be around for a little while afterwards and then it will disappear right right so what uh, you, yeah um what you would do is remove image remove remove so it's not attached to any profile or free space page and then after 30 days it'll it'll vanish I don't think I saw those words remove image before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually there's this 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 image page is there's a lot on it. It's dense. Um oh, yeah. so um Hillary, any any other thoughts about the profile overall? Great. Um I don't think I had any particular comments. Um what about I the acknowledgments to... at the bottom? Are they appropriate? The acknowledgments for the people who helped with the historical society um you can actually put yeah I think, yeah that that seems that seems okay the acknowledgments okay. we that's where we would normally put them right at the end below all these sources so i can't see that there'd be a problem there okay i like that what links here um at the bottom now I, I, there's so many new things i'm noticing yes yes WikiTree browser extension mm -hmm. that will create that. Um, That's great. Yeah. Right. Cool. So if, um, okay, so check the okay the Adobe links that I put on there. That was the question I had. Those Adobe oh. links uh, were, I Ooh. couldn't figure out how to get. I think it was a news article, and I don't know that they're actually going to go through but I put them into my system and then I made a link for them. Is that okay to do that? Okay. Um, well, I'm a little what? surprised that, that that worked. The I've never seen anyone do that. Hillary, oh, have you? <laughs> I, yeah. Um, yeah, it's come up for me um, with, the, with the newspaper. So 
And when yeah. I opened, went to open it, it came up in, in another link. So, and it's come up for you as well. So, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, now, what is the date? So, you see, 1917, it's, it's uh, not under copyright anymore. So, so that's helpful. And maybe that's why I got away with that. Yeah. Um, and you, but you did get it through, through newspapers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the best way. Where's the PDF hosted of the, of that page? Uh, you mean Adobe through my Adobe through. Oh, my... okay. So it's on your account. So then you just mm-hmm. have this picture on your account. It's you're not actually going into um newspapers.com because then that would be a subscription site right i mean that would be mm. this is the work right because that, that right okay thank you yeah because i had i had an account with them or i still do and i'm trying to kind of move the things you know onto WikiTree as much as i can and then right. get rid of my account so um when i would if you would i think i believe if you link it when you have an account and then you put it in as a citation. Sometimes you have to have an account or a subscription to see that. Exactly. So I was trying to make a roundabout way of doing that by downloading it as a photo and then linking it myself. But I don't know if that's okay to do, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know if that lasts forever, you know what I mean? Right, right. As long um, as you have the account on, on Adobe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I'm gone, then what happens? Like, yeah, no. So I might have to re, restudy yeah. that. There might be some oh. way of doing something from from the newspapers dot com, but I'm not sure because I don't have an account there. Um, but sometimes I, mean, uh, whenever I do anything from a newspaper, I always just um, uh, cook cook the piece that I want from. But I tend to um, do it from the British newspaper archive just because of the nature of the profiles that I. Uh, I have, but um, I just tend to cut the piece that I need and just um, use a citation on it. Um, but I'm thinking Sorcerer works with newspapers.com, doesn't it? Is it? So it, um, create, yeah. it would create a, a citation for you. And if you only wanted to cite a, a piece out of the paper, you might be able to um, just cut out the piece that, that you want from the document um, and just save it as a, an image um, to your profile. I'm wondering if that, if I'll have to check and I don't want to waste a lot of everyone's time on, on that particular thing, because I think I put that same citation on Orville, on his brother Orville's. Um, and I don't think I did it the same way. So I'll have to, I think I did do it directly from newspapers.com uh, with a sourcer citation. I'm pretty sure I'll have to check those two accounts and, and fix that. Cause I don't think that should, that's going to last, you know? I am um, in in general, H- Hillary. I can you take over talking for a second? I'm just looking yeah. for something that I want to put in the in the yeah. chat. Yeah, because with the, the, the trouble with a lot of the newspaper things is you just have to be careful with um, um, the any terms and conditions that you've got. I mean, I know the British Newspaper Archive are happy for you to cite uh snippets from their their newspapers and as long as you actually um tell you know give it a proper citation and say where you picked it from um and that um but they obviously wouldn't like you doing large amounts but obviously an individual article it just highlights that what what they what you can find there and that obviously helps them um i'm not sure about the ones that are on newspaper docs got dot com but if they allow us some kind of sharing or you or if things like wikitree saucer works with them presumably at least the citation is there um for somebody to pick it up and and um find that that's that same article at some later point i think probably so i just put something in the chat um i uh i i'm a huge fan of sorcerer i don't know why i I haven't been using it for newspapers. Well, I also mm-hmm. don't have a newspapers.com subscription, but um, uh, someone clipped this for me uh, when I was doing some research last weekend. So my personal preference is to put something like this in my sources. Um, it shows you know, the publication, the date, the title of the article. It gives a newspapers.com link 
Um, as you said, who knows what that will do in 100 years, but um, there it is, and the access date. And then I would put a, 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 a clipping. Then I would put the, the, um, the clipping in as an image rather mm -hmm. than doing a PDF. Because it's so, very so the difference. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So so does that that doesn't work quite with genealogy bank though, does it? Do, uh, are you familiar with them? Because I think they give you a temporary link, like for two weeks, and yeah. then because mm -hmm. I when I go to my suggestions report, mm -hmm. I see those coming up, like the link's no longer valid, but it was for like two weeks, and so if you redo it, which you can't keep doing every two weeks, sure, it will yeah. give you a new link, but. I'm trying to figure out how in the heck you get around that. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mm. know of Genealogy Bank. I haven't used it myself. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. I think the main GCP. thing is, that, yeah, the main thing is that you get your good, a good citation. Because if you get a good citation, even if the link is not a permanent link, you've got the information of what that, um, newspaper or magazine or whatever it was that you that you've found uh, you've got mm -hmm. that information there and someone in the future could go and find that same thing somewhere you know it's some, uh, usually you're citing something that is a physical object at some po point in some place um be it a book a magazine a newspaper whatever so you need yeah. to actually so have something so that if somebody can actually get hold of that in the future they can find it um and with enough information that about like it's got page number column and everything right. so you could go exactly to that quite easily if you've got that newspaper mm -hmm. and yeah, that's um, a good yeah. point yeah good ellen point. makes a good suggestion here um you know in addition to or, or instead of putting an image up, um, you right. could also transcribe if it's yeah. if it's brief enough. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I think I was uh, focusing on the the visual more mm -hmm. than the citation, and I should start thinking the opposite way. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And if there's a photo there, great. But yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, any question? I, I haven't been able to uh, really keep an eye on, on the chat. Are there other questions that are, are coming up? Because if I if you put something in the chat and I didn't see it, please just say hey or raise your hand or just something. more comments more comments about citation. That's all really um yeah. nothing. Uh, um you know uh obviously we need to just um yeah i had um, one quick question yes uh, at the bottom where um you have the acknowledgements can you still link to the organization there like you mentioned um yeah the milwaukee police historical society like i wasn't aware that there was one for instance so would a link to their to that organization work there that's okay for that space yes yeah does oh, everybody okay. know how to do that i should hyper you could hyperlink it right yeah. right there uh, right? Let's see. yeah that's a good idea yeah uh what is it called Mil milwaukee police historical society? Milwaukee historical police society i believe okay. i think there we could go. go backwards i'm dyslexic <laughs> Okay, is that it? Um, Let me see. Yeah. yeah. Do you, would you yeah. mind if I hyperlinked it so that I can show everybody how? No, go right ahead. So Thank you take, you. yeah, you take whatever um, your is website on? is. And now when I go back. And, oh, okay. And go to acknowledgments. Oh. Oops. I think does somebody have their sound or okay. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is that's the text that I wanna show up. So I'm gonna do a single bracket. There's my link and just put a space and then close it off. Whoops, not single bracket. Now I'm gonna use preview just so that in case I made a mistake, you get to see what you've done here. 
acknowledgement. So that's what it's going to look like, and it's going to hyperlink. So um, it's it's similar. It's it, it, to me, it's similar to, to hyperlinking a profile, um, but it uses just one one bracket, and it does not use the uh, the vertical bar in the middle. So that all. Let's see. What did I do? Nope. I don't want to leave. Um, I did a formatting. Let's just say that. Yeah, great question. Yeah. Okay. I don't know to understand. Mm. It's all, it's all, yeah. Uh, it's next to so shall we look, should we look at um, another of your profiles, B? Or do you want to look at my dad's? Milton sure. Spencer. Milton. And by the way, um, Dee has done some really nice um, background images. Um, is that, where did you get that, Dee? I got that from my Adobe stock. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I, per I bought that so, because I part of, it's part of my account. But he was a truck driver. So I was yeah, tr yeah. trying to get the trucking thing in there. And I looked on Google and I just couldn't find the right image. So that's right. What I did. Uh, <laughs> So the, um, that's another, if you, if you happen to have an image where it would work to be a background image, let me just show um, again on this very busy um, image <laughs> page, set as background image. And you could, for any of the three people that the photo, the photo is linked to, you could make it their background image. So. All right. So what questions do you have about your dad's profile? So I'm sure I still have a lot of typos and things in there, but um, okay. So what I did in there was because to, for me personally, this was a uh, therapy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, you know, once you get to some of the research notes and things in there that I've taken a per, you know, personal comment to, um, it was very much, a history lesson for me and in where I grew up in the city of Milwaukee. So I wanted to link in, you know, some of the things that I was talking about in there, which weren't necessarily something to do with dad personally, but it was going on in the neighborhood, like, like the father grappy marches, say the civil rights marches and things like that. Mm -hmm. So did I link those in properly? Do they make, I mean, this is my first, this was probably the first profile I did on, on my own, I think. Um, right. So I, you know, like I wanted, because for me, I have a daughter and I personally, I desperately at age 66 am struggling now to know my family. Yes. I, I had no idea, no idea who they were. Mm -hmm. um, grew up with my father and I still didn't know him, right? So now I'm getting to know everybody. And I don't want my daughter, I want my daughter to know them like I do now. So mm -hmm. this is what I'm leaving her. Um, and her family. Um, so a lot of it's got a personal flair to it too. And I don't know if that's okay. You know, I know that's supposed to go in the research notes maybe more, but I don't know if I did it right. So I'm open for, you know, protocol and SOP and editing and all of that because I want to do the, do it right. Right, so right. I, One yeah. option, I mean, I mean we... Um, all of us on Wikitree um, who are connected, you know, that means that our immediate family is on there too, our parents, our grandparents, many of whom we had, you know, really rich and maybe complicated yeah. relationships with. Um, so um, certainly what you're saying about the historical events that happened during your father's life that mm -hmm. had a direct in, impact on his reality. Um, I yeah. Uh, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. think that's that's very appropriate to to weave those into the biography and makes for a richer biography yeah. rather than just you know so and so was born they married you know was yeah. very dry, but um, the other place where you can interweave more personal detail is oh oh sorry oops good morning <laughs> um. Is the personal the personal memories 
why am I not seeing that on your profile? Um, maybe do I have to go to edit mode? Let's just see. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? Um, Hillary, I'm looking for the section that's personal memories. It's, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure how it whether it only shows up on the one for the profile manager. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to um, hmm. one of mine. Um, okay, so this is one of my great grandmothers whom I did not know. Oh, here's an example. If you want to incorporate a photo into the text, it would look like that. Um, and here, memories, um, that's where I would, and you can add photos in as well. Um, and that would be um, a good place, post a new memory. I don't know why I don't see that on uh, on your dad's profile. Do you see it, Dee, that option towards the bottom? I used to see it. I don't know if they, did they, maybe do you have to refresh maybe? I don't know. Hmm. I know what you mean though, but I've, yeah, yeah. I've never put them in there. Um, yeah, I just recently started using that and I think it's a really, nice way to to create both a sort of uh, I don't know more official biography and then a more personal side to it um, yeah oh it's so it's uh, yeah I see it so when I'm on the I'm not in I'm not in edit if I just scroll all the way down past to see also what links here right under what links here it says memories, enter a personal reminiscence or story. And I haven't put any memories in yet. Okay, yeah. There's one, there's a there's a section there. So it's way down. And you're in the viewing mode. Mm -hmm. You know what? Maybe I can't, because I as everybody can see on my screen, what links here, comments, and probably I don't see the memory. <laughs> thing because I'm not on the trusted list for the profile. That must be oh. it. Yeah. But you're in edit. Oh, it's not, yeah, so but it's it's open. No, that doesn't matter. I made it open. True. True. Oh. But what's with the evil step kids? Oh. <laughs> I you know I put that in. I kept it kept going by that and going like wow. Well, I'm the sorry, evil the evil you stuff. got that, didn't you? <laughs> huh. Keep going now. Uh, uh, I've just had a look on. I've just had a look on my father's profile, and it and it says that memories enter a personal reminiscence mm -hmm. or story. These are only visible to the trusted list. That's it. Oh. Yeah. I had a feeling it was something like that. Right. Right. Oh well, so, I learned something new today. Yeah, so that won't work moving for forward then. Like if putting in, yeah. I mean, if it's only to the trusted list, it's more for researchers, right? Sort well, of. it's for people who have a really close connection to the individual. Um, is your daughter on Wikitree? She is. Okay, good. Well, I would add her to the trusted list for all your family profiles. Mm -hmm. She and my husband are on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, I just, I did like a couple links to, um, you know, some UWM um, papers, you know, that I felt needed to be explained on the history of what was going on in the neighborhood at the time, why my dad did what he did, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if that makes any, you know, with what was going on in the, in the United States with Jim Crow and all of that, yeah. so, yeah. which was a big reason for, for this for my whole family implosion, <laughs> whatever. But um, so, yeah, I really wanted to make sure that the historical part was was cited mm -hmm. no. and not just word of mouth, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it gives context to the lives of our ancestors, so. 
Uh, I appreciate it very much because it tend this tended to be the kind of thing people would run away from at one time, uh, not want to discuss passing or you know acknowledge that how that history or colorism shaped their family dynamics. So thank right. you. Oh right. Um, I also have you know in doing my genealogy now the, the things I'm trying to do feverishly now at my age for for my daughter um, is also the blurred lines that I'm coming across. Um, in census from Negro to mulatto to white because they can. And then I come into the categorization, which yes, I want to put my category categories in correctly and my daughters, how, but then I go back a few ancestors where they're passing clearly like my father changed his, you know, his symbols to, you know, from B to, to W because he could. and. You know, so how do you continue to categorize in genealogy? How do you continue to? Well, do you you to realize that? it's a contingent on time period. And also that if you look mm -hmm. at the US census, they have a really great feature on their place. that shows when these different racial terms came in and out of favor or mm -hmm. uh, across, which I think some people aren't familiar with too, that that, 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 that even has its own history, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Right, and so I, I've been went through oral history too with new cousins that I'm meeting now who are, had gone through similar things that I had gone through as a young person, not knowing what, what our families were going through and why, you know. So now we're able to, to get these oral histories down. And so I need a place to put those too, not in a gossip form, you know, obviously, but in a, in a factual form, but was so-and-so Uncle George or, or Grandpa George decided that he was. You may want to think about could. donating them to a local, a local institution as well. Like um, some libraries have collections of oral histories, um, universities. Um, so, so, so look into that too, because you already know what the process is to, to, to convert that into a document. You know? Thank you. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I also am of mixed race with a Taiwanese father and a Caucasian mother, and it's uh, self identity is a complicated issue. It is, and with the histor the historical things and our and our generations now, it now it does it really doesn't matter uh, anymore. You know, we're all we're all connected, right? That's the truth. We're all connected, so we're all one. But but in that era that my father and my mother, who was a mixed race couple at the time, and, and yeah. your family too, mm -hmm. and the wars and all of that, you know, and it was all under, you know, under a hush hush. And so I, I'm just grateful to be able to at least maybe turn my family history into a, a outward history lesson on systemic racism and how it affects those moving forward. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that, but this is part of my history. Well, if we all do something, then it can affect change, right? Yeah. So thank you for doing that. Well, um, we're we're coming up on an hour. Um, D, do you, D, and anyone else, um, burn? Do we have some burning questions? Sort of a lightning round. Mm -hmm. Things we, things we, I feel like we covered a lot. We talked about a lot today, um, but was there something that I, that I left out or? I, I think maybe, not that you left it out. Maybe that I'm just, uh, I think DNA, uh, I've got, you know, I've got my DNA tests in there, mm -hmm. my husband's, my daughter's, my, I got my mother. I actually swabbed my mother when she was in hospice with her permission. So, mm -hmm. uh, a, not even a week before she passed, I was able to get her DNA. Not that I doubted it, but I wanted to have that, you know? And um, so I have the tests. I, I yeah. own the, the tests, but they're individuals. Of course, my mother's deceased, so I am my mother now, but my husband has one. My daughter has one. And mm -hmm. I put mine in there, I think, but I don't know if it's in there right. But um, um, I, have a, I have a real difficulty understanding that. And I think I need some links on where to further educate. <laughs> my mom has one. Um, my dad didn't have one. Okay. Um, and did you go, you must have gone through um, GEDmatch. I mean, to 
because what you would have done is tested at Ancestry or 23andMe or any of those sites, and then you would have downloaded your raw DNA file. And then to put it on Wikitree, well, you don't put your DNA on Wikitree. You upload it to GEDmatch, and then you put the GEDmatch number on Wikitree. So I think I did that on mine, but I wasn't able to do it on my mom's or my daughter's yet, maybe. So. Right. Well, if your daughter and husband are on Wikitree, maybe you can just sit with them you, mm -hmm. and help them do it. You're not okay. allowed to do DNA for somebody else. Oh, yeah. um, it, in the case of your mother, um, that would be different. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if there's like a waiting period or anything like that. Let me just go to your profile because I saw your DNA showing up on yeah, I thought it did. Now, I, I, I think it. someone helped me with that. I think someone helped me with that way at the beginning because um, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure how to have that confirmation confirmed yeah. with DNA, you know. Um, you can so put your that, details. You put your details of your test on there. Um, um, and even if you haven't got it on GEDmatch, you can put your details of your test that where you tested. Mm -hmm. So, so if you click on, I, I, I put it out in the description. If you click on my brother, I think I wrote it in his, like exactly what it said on the test. Um, okay. Um, uh, just to show you here's, I, I know <clears throat> I followed the process that I described. <clears throat> so you can see I tested at Ancestry. My GEDmatch kit number is this. Oh, so okay. that, that allows, and GEDmatch is free. <laughs> and that will allow anybody else who's on Wikitree or GEDmatch to compare um, on GEDmatch to see. Um, GEDmatch, so GEDmatch actually links through to your Wikitree um, yes. uh, as well. Um, I've noticed because um, when I was like, I'm on GEDmatch and when I know and I noticed it linked through and it gives you a link to your wiki tree thing if people want if you want to if you ever if you get matches with somebody who's not on wiki tree they can see your tree on wiki tree or see what you what is publicly visible of your tree on wiki tree so yeah so yeah you can see the difference between i know you have something though why is your birth date up there uh my birth date or Diana? no diana's why is her birthday uh, on her profile I don't know. I mean, is it, isn't it supposed to be like private? Is it? If she's alive? Well, it depends on your privacy setting. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So this is. I've got, uh, let me see. I've got um, well, private I, with public biography and family tree. Yeah. And it's part of the bio. Um, so you can, you can see up here, it just says born 1950s. But if someone chooses to put their birthday, oh, it, how I do, how yeah. I say, it. yeah, from how bio, I do the then, dates from the document. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't bother me, but if it's against the rules, I, I want to no, go. No, I'm not know. thinking of that. Yeah. I'm thinking more identity theft and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that's a personal choice. Yeah. Well, we'll go back through. I mean, right now it's uh, so that part is visible, then you're saying to the public that particular yes. state yes. there okay i mm -hmm. see what you're saying i may go back and switch that out yeah and then uh, my brother if you if you go on to the citation number three for uh in in my bio there for well, after my brother david john spencer um do i want um well i can't because they're your brother your siblings are private no can you go in the biography part where oh. it's where it reads her brother yes. david go yes. up there and oh. then click three or whatever Oh, go back one. Go back. Yeah. And then click the citation three by oh, David. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then all I did was I if you just click that, I wrote confirm shared DNA because it was that's what the test his test said. Yes. Like, he didn't down upload it or download it, but he said, here, read this. This is what it's this is what yeah. it says on my yeah. DNA test or whatever. So I just typed that those that in there. Right. Um, and there's a, um, so your brother is not on Wikitree. So he's, he's okay. So there's a stickler. <laughs> got it. Um, there, I can, I can send you a link for, um, um, a help page with DNA. I mean, there okay. is, 
there is a particular way to do a DNA confirmation. But given that he's not on WikiTree, I think how you handled it is fine. The best and, I could do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the shared organs is, makes it clear that it's a very, very close relationship, so. Right, yeah. right. He, he was also part of the um, National Geographic Health uh, Group. Uh, they did a, back in 2005, I think it was, he, works, he worked for Steerus Corporation and yeah. they asked all the employees to do that. So he did that, but silly me, I'm like ignorant to the whole DNA. DNA. He says, I'll do the DNA for both of us because we have the same parents. Well, yeah, but it's not quite the same when it right. comes out. <laughs> right. But right. anyway, I did get his help of group, his H and, you know, I got those <laughs> from that test, but I don't even know how to put that in there. Like just type that in or like, um, well, I mean, I did, um, I did an, um, a mitochondrial DNA. Um, so yeah, I mean, you would upload, so I've uploaded both my autosomal results from ancestry DNA and then my mitochondrial and uh, it, it, there's a field to ask for your half. I see that. I see. Okay. Yeah. Great. And, and for mitochondrial or Y DNA, um, you would want to go through this website, Mito Y DNA, which is okay. also free. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Great. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, Dee, um, <laughs> for sharing your your very fascinating and gorgeous profiles with us. Um, thank you. I'm going to go back and, and read your dad's in, in um, more detail. And um, and thank you, yeah. everyone, for being here. It was, it was a nice full house for, for a, a Sunday Zoom. And hope, hope you'll be back next time. If anybody would be interested um, in, in sharing your profiles with us on a Thursday or a Sunday, um, please, I'm going to stop screen sharing so that I can... <laughs> Um, go in the chat. Um, please send me a message. Um, there's my WikiTree ID. Also, any questions that you have, I'm I'm happy to to answer those. And I'll put up one more helpful link, which is the free space page for our these sessions. Um, so this is where you can find the Zoom links. You can find the YouTube links once um, it's been posted afterwards. Um, the oh, recordings. Back. What was that? Okay. Um, and and other resources. So um, I guess if that's it, we'll we'll say goodbye, and thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. You're welcome.